Les Rantilles Arc is home to 21 identified active volcanic centers. Though rare, eruptions do happen, posing a risk to life and property. The seismic research center at UE St. Augustine have monitored and studied these structures for decades throughout the Eastern Caribbean. And the islands are actually just the top parts of the ocean floor, and a lot of what we're interested in actually are buried beneath the sea. So we're very much interested in determining volcanoes that can erupt. Um, in the case of volcanoes, you could perhaps say months before they erupt or years before they erupt that they're moving towards an eruption. We share it with people as much as possible. Um, and we urge them to utilize that information. We're particularly interested in, in Grenada and, and the Southern Grenadines because just north of Grenada, we have the only live or active submarine volcano in the, in the Caribbean. That volcano summit is situated approximately 180 meters below the sea and goes by the name Kikam Jenny. Located just eight kilometers north of Grenada, Kikam Jenny has been the most active volcano of the arc, erupting 14 times since 1939. Kikem Jenny was discovered by accident in 1939 thanks to an uh, eruption who actually breached the surface. To now we believe that was actually the strongest eruption of the volcano. Unfortunately at that time we didn't have any uh, monitoring system to, to get track or record of, of that event. Scientists in Trinidad and Tobago have been engaged with their colleagues from international agencies to go on exploratory cruises to expand our knowledge of the deep sea environment of the Southern Caribbean. A scientific cruise is a gathering of physical and chemical oceanographers, geologists, biologists, seismologists, engineers and many more. They work around the clock in cramped quarters to gather data, samples and specimens which are then shared among partners worldwide. One of these partnerships resulted in an expedition by the exploration vessel Nautilus in 2013 and 2014. The rover is control on bottom, five, three, three meters. Kick of Jenny has always generated a lot of interest for scientists all over the world. So Kick of Jenny was actually the location that they were coming to initially. Participants are generally invited from the territories where the vessel is actually going to be exploring. So in 2013, myself and Dr. Frederick Donidon, he's from Guadeloupe and he is based at the Seismic Centre here in Trinidad and Tobago, we were both invited on board. Thanks to the EV Nautilus and the Ocean Exploration Trust, scientists were able to unravel some of the secrets of this subsea volcano, sending live images to colleagues, stakeholders and students around the world. We all know about Kikim Jenny and we can't travel our boats through that area, but to actually see it underwater, uh, you know, and watch all the creatures, and they actually found creatures that they hadn't found anywhere else. I sat up most nights uh, just watching this live stream, just waiting for the next thing to be discovered on Kikim Jenny. We were able to come up with a very detailed bathymetric map. Um, and when I say bathymetric map, essentially, it's a detailed sounding of the depth of the ocean. So therefore you end up, you could generate an image of how the volcano looks. It allows us to now have a standard upon which to measure changes that could happen. That is very important to trace its morphological development. I really fell in love with Kikim Jenny because it's a very unique underwater volcano that had a lot of surprises for us. When one side of the volcano collapsed, the debris avalanche buried organic matter generating chemical-rich fluid over time. This chemical-rich fluid provides the energy that sustains life through the process of chemosynthesis. It was like someone took a, a knife and cut the ocean open, and it was bleeding down slope, which was really odd. And that bleeding all coalesced into a little river underwater. And when we went in and looked, we found that it was alive. There were an ecosystem we did not know existed on our planet. When the volcano is erupting, it's overruling everything. When it goes back to a more quiet level, that's where basically more primitive organisms start to colonize first. Until where we reach a stage where temperature is more uh, welcoming, for more evolved uh, organism, it's a, a cycle. So you destroy and you rebuild. The area around the volcano is thriving with bacteria, 
which are the primary producers in a food web that includes creatures such as tube worms, mussels, shrimp, crabs, lobsters, fish and octopus. The discovery of these habitats by the Nautilus also brought some surprises, including species of record-breaking size. These are our giant tubes, not found in this sort of normal coastal or marine environment. This is one of the phenomena of deep sea biology, where you have this gigantism. These are the very large Bathymodiolus mussels. They were found in huge communities or huge beds of them. And this is actually where they would be attached to this sediment. And there would be lots of other organisms attached to the surface of the shell itself. It was quite large and we are very excited to say that it's on record the largest specimen ever found. Marine debris is only one of a handful of ways that humans are impacting our deep ocean. Climate change, ocean acidification, fishing, mining, oil and gas extraction are just some of the threats that the deep seas are facing. As we admire the beauty of the deep sea and recognize its value, it is up to us as humans to honor our responsibilities of stewardship. In the deep sea, there are no borders. Um, there are no barriers in the ocean. Um, we tend to think of ourselves as separate islands, but that is not the case in the ocean. And so when we're thinking about you know, deep sea protection, deep sea management, we really need to have a, a regional scope, even possibly a global scope. And so we, it's really, really important that we, you know, um, manage to equip locals with that knowledge so that they can help to sustain our deep ocean.